Hello YouTube, my name is Miles Anderson. I'm a professional joke explainer, and today I'm watching the special The Gringo Poppy by Brendan Schaub, who is a stand-up comedian and one of the best stand-up comedians working today. Here we go. So already you can see he's got a really big dedicated fan base. Uh, they're outside of Jimmy John's here. Um, by sort of this large uh, business park up by the highway. Um, the lineup's going around the block. Uh, there's lots of parking out there, you can see. Uh, a couple spaces missing, uh, which means that uh, a lot of his fans probably took the bus to get there, um, which is so cool to see that his fans, you know, they come from all different demographics. They're very excited to see the show. Here he comes. Big boy nation. There he is. Big boy nation. Big boy nation. So, uh, you know, uh, he looks like a pretty tall guy. Um, so that's an appropriate track for him to come on. He's got a, a drink, a uh, very classic standout thing to have a drink. He's very relaxed and loose, ready to tell some jokes. Takes a little sip, puts it on the stool. He's a very confident guy. What's up, Dallas? They're in Dallas, Texas, okay. So I guess Jimmy John's is the uh, comedy club in Dallas. Look at you guys. I'm not used to this. Dallas is a little different. There's some ladies in the crowd tonight. I am not used to that. Going after I the women, to off the top. Bros. That's, that's what I specialize in. It's a real cock fest usually at these things. <laughs> So he's making fun of the fact that a lot of the time his audience is predominantly men. Um, but there are some women there tonight, so that's funny. I don't mind it, though. I'm the bro whisperer. That's what they call me. <laughs> are we vaccinated up in here, Dallas? Everybody vaccinated? Controversial topic to go after the vaccines off the top of the show. He got you dicey, dicey. Yeah, he knows it's... Uh... I love you, Texas. That's how it is. So he's obviously a very skilled comedian because going after a topic as controversial as vaccines can be risky. So let's see how he's going to land this one. I love it. I love it. There's always one guy. No fucking way, bro! <laughs> so he's doing an impression of, a, of a, someone who wouldn't want to get vaccinated and how they uh, would be very stiff uh, with their walking. Um, People, they're loving it. That needle's not touching this fucking temple, daddy. <laughs> as he says, he's taking a nacho, dipping in nacho cheese. The... <laughs> oh, my bad, Mr. Whole Foods, my bad. <laughs> okay, so he's got Mr. He says he's, he's making fun of this guy. If he didn't get vaccinated, he'd probably shop at Whole Foods. Um which is very, uh, you know, a, a granola rich person thing to do. Also, he's got, um, he slapped his, his mic on the knee. Uh, that's a, a really great way of letting people know that a joke happened. It's just by slapping that mic on the knee. It gives them a sound cue. It kind of triggers a primal response to laugh. So, again, he's just one of the best. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to do, man. I was... This whole vaccination stuff, I'm not anti-vax, man, I'm vaccinated, but it's, uh, it's all in their marketing. They fucked this whole thing up in their marketing. Without Operation Warp Speed, when they launched that, remember they're trying to get everybody to get vaccinated? And they're like, yeah, go to Krispy Kreme, buy a dozen donuts, get vaccinated. Like, <laughs> the fuck? That makes sense. Fat people are like, hell yeah, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> So obviously the, the observation he's made here is that uh, people who are overweight um, love donuts. Um, so that's the joke there. Uh, very good stuff. <laughs> it was so confusing. I remember I called my mom. I was like, hey, mama, are you, uh, are you getting vaccinated? She's all, I wasn't. And then, like, you know, I love donuts. And fucking... <laughs> so he's calling his mom fat there. Do you remember the first dumbass that messed it all up for everybody? Scared the shit out of from, from getting vaccinated? Remember that idiot? He's all over the news stations. The first moron to get that Johnson & Johnson. Right? Clearly a meth addict. They just... <laughs> nobody checked into his background. Remember that? They put him on the news. He's sweaty as shit. He was on all the major broadcasts. He's like, holy shit, dude! 
Yeah, I got it done. I got that Johnson Johnson, bro. I don't feel good, bro. I can't stop sweating, bro. I feel like I'm growing wings. Bro. So I, uh, I don't actually remember this uh, character uh, that he's talking about here, the meth addict character. Um, I also haven't observed that uh, meth addicts have one eye lid uh, come down, but obviously this is a character uh, he's creating like a surreal comedy that he's doing here, um, which of course is a big hit with the crowd. They love it. Um, Brendan Schaub is one of the more gifted physical comedians out there, along with his uh, well-written um, premises and jokes. So I, I'm excited to see where this is going here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay low for a little bit on the vaccination. I'm just going <laughs> to... Remember that moron? It's all in marketing, man. Like, they need to hire some just a dime piece actor we've never heard of. Just blast them all over the news, right? Just somebody who's fine. Get them on there and just put them all over the news, all over the nation. Be like, I, yeah, dude, I got the Johnson Johnson. I feel pretty good. I feel great, actually. If I'm being honest, one side effect, if I, I just want to be up front with everybody. Goddamn dick's down to here. Just <laughs> fucking... See, I like, see, that's a really good punchline because I knew that's what he was going to say uh, just before he said it. And so it's very satisfying when you can guess the joke before it's over. Um, it, uh, it's nice. It makes you feel very smart, um, which is uh, really great. And one of the things I like about Brendan Schaub's comedy is that you always kind of know exactly what he's going to say. Um, it's very similar to jokes that have been made before. Um, so it's super, super nice uh, to know that uh, he's a real master of a predictable stand-up. <laughs> and the crowd loves it. You have a line of bros at CVS just like... <laughs> Just trying to do my part, man. Just <laughs> it's good to be in Dallas, man. You guys do it right. It's good to be in Dallas. I know. Yeah. Yep. There's a reason I decided to shoot my special here, man. You guys just give me so much love. I absolutely love Texas, man. I, uh, yeah. In yeah, Texas loves you. Brendan Schaub. I, uh, I haven't touched a mask since I touched down. It is fantastic. <laughs> LA is not like this, y'all. LA is North Korea with a beach. <laughs> <laughs> but they give us Wi Fi, so that's cool. Yeah, a bit of, hy Tom, bit of hyperbole there. Uh, California is not quite uh, like North Korea. Uh, I don't know if you guys have. Uh, I don't think anyone has escaped California with a body full of worms as they get shot as they try to cross the border. It's not quite the same, but obviously bringing up North Korea is very funny uh, when, you're in, uh, when you're in Dallas. They're talking about locking us back down. I can't go through another lockdown. Straight up, my, the shop household barely made it through the last one. We eked our way out of that last one. We did not do well with it. Also, Dallas, my lockdown's different. I got a five-year-old and two-year-old. Parents know what I'm talking about. I would rather do anything else than be locked down with those fucking demons 24-7. <laughs> we're not even locked down. My girl was fighting with me the other week. If we get locked down, we're fucked. She was fighting with me. Fucking like, yeah, yeah, Fauci, yeah, yeah, Delta, yeah, yeah, Mass, yeah, yeah. What are we going to do? I yeah, yeah, yeah. see myself, oh my God. My life would be so much easier if I was just gay as shit. <laughs> So <laughs> he's making fun of how his wife sounds, like kind of a meh, 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 which was like a really popular style of, uh, of comedy back in the 1950s. Um, so he's kind of hearkening back to the golden age of stand-up here um, by making fun of how his wife is uh, an annoying nag. Um, and also that his children are demons. So he's kind of a, you know, he's kind of a classic comic in that way. Um, not a lot of comedians are doing that these days, but Brendan Schaub is obviously very different. Um, and uh, the crowd absolutely loves it, especially the men. If I was locked down with the bros, Dallas, quarantined with the homies, you know how much more fun we would have? Oh my God, dude. We'd like play video games all day. We'd work out. At night, we'd fuck each other. <laughs> This guy was all, what the fuck? No. I... 
So obviously, you know, he's making a joke that being gay is very funny. Um, again, sort of a, this is more of a 1990s style comedian that would do a joke like that. Um, again, he's just sort of hearkening back to that age of stand-up. Uh, really cool to see here the crowd enjoys it. I mean, the thought of two men having sex is just absurd. So that's really the crux of that joke there. I thought we were gonna play video games, bro. <laughs> Sorry, man. I love that. No, fuck no, I'm not into that, dude. I'm not, I don't want to be locked down with you anymore. I just... <laughs> what are you going to do, bro? You're bored. <laughs> he's laughing at his own jokes. Something you always love to see in stand-up. You know, he's really enjoying himself. Sometimes, again, the crowd doesn't understand that a joke has happened, so you either laugh at your own jokes or you slap the mic on your knee. You know, sometimes you really just got to let them know that you've said something funny. Uh, and he understands this. This is why he's uh, such a great comic. <laughs> One can dream, Dallas. One can dream. I never thought I'd say this to a live audience. One thing that I'm grateful for, for the, the governor of California, Governor Newsom, for locking us down for an entire year and ruining small businesses. Because I wouldn't have realized this unless I was locked down with my family for an entire year. I realized my girl's not cool. She's just not... <laughs> she's not a friendly human being. I, uh, I married a goddamn rattlesnake. <laughs> she's like... This mic so the, the joke is that he hates his uh, he hates his wife again. This is the second time he's mentioned this, so he uh, must be building towards a big punchline. This is my girl, man. This is what I'm dealing with, yo. At, listen, LA is different than Texas. My, they just opened up my son's school last week. He hasn't been school in a fucking year. They just opened it last week, first day of kindergarten. So I got him his first day outfit, looking all fucking fly, dope kicks, giant backpack, backwards hat, looks just like me. I'm walking up for school. I'm like, dude, it's about to be lit as fuck. <laughs> all his little friends out front in the first day outfits. I'm like, oh my God, you guys are cute as shit. I need to document this. I go, T, get tight. There's a bunch of you squeezing tight. Daddy's gonna take a picture. Ready? Cheese on three. Ready? One, two, three. Cheese, they're all cheese. I take out my phone, I'm all, hell yeah. I snap a pic, I text it to my girl. She gets it, she looks at it, she goes, crop out the uglies, resend. <laughs> what? Excuse me? So Brendan Schaub is making it clear that his, his wife is the real monster in the relationship, which, you know, I don't know if is, is uh, necessarily uh, funny unless he's kind of getting towards uh, something uh, later on in, in the special um, but uh, he's just kind of he's building sympathy with the crowd you know he's really wanting the crowd to like him and hate his wife um, which is again kind of something a master craftsman does when you've got that stage time you've got the power to sort of shape the narrative and so the more people like you um, the better they're going to be with uh, understanding your jokes and, and uh, giving you that uh, applause break. I said, you're in a group chat to other parents, dumbass. Yes. Okay, so that was the punchline, is that she... Savage, y'all, savage. And then he takes a little... So I don't, I, I don't know what the other, if the other parents said anything, but that's kind of where the story ends there. He takes a little sip of his, uh, of his uh, beverage there, and I think we're getting into the next bit here. So that was the whole... Uh, that was the whole bit. I married a Mexican, y'all. I married a Mexican. I thought you would like that. Listen, <laughs> listen, da listen. I thought you guys would enjoy that. Listen, Dallas, Dallas. I don't mean like Taco Bell Mexican. No, 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 no. I'm talking Guadalajara. Born and raised. Came to the States 10 years ago, illegally Mexican. The so real. He's talking about how the. Mexicans uh, come across the border illegally into the United States. Uh, a few other comedians have, have mentioned that observation before, but uh, it's, he's just sort of bringing it up again so the crowd uh, gets a little bit riled. Deal Holyfield, y'all, this shit is... I did a lot of white girls, big titties and flat asses before her, and it just never worked out for me. It just would never work out. And I'll never forget this, one of my boys goes, dude, dude, papi, what are you doing, bro? Get with a Latina, bro. You know why? Because they're fun and they're spicy. No doubt, definitely spicy. Girl spicy, right? Girl spicy. You know what spicy means? They're assholes. That's what that means. <laughs> 
<laughs> Kenny's Sorry, laughing. Man. He's laughing at his own stuff, showing that he's enjoying his uh, observations. And uh, the crowd loves it. Dude, when we first got the other shoes cooking authentic Mexican food seven nights a week, I'm not used to this. I was like, what? Fajitas every Wednesday? Fuck yeah. No, dumbass. Not fajitas every Wednesday. Real Mexican dishes, y'all. Real shit from the motherland. I'm talking huevos ranchos. <laughs> Carne asada. Pico de gallo. <laughs> And my favorite, chili, ah. Uh. <laughs> so he's making fun of obviously how uh, Spanish sounds uh, to a, an Anglophone. Um, great observation. Um, we're gonna see if he turns that into a joke later on. Every night though, every night, seven years later, every fucking night. I know I look Latin. There's... So I, I don't think he does. I don't know who I am. She's like, honey, what the fuck is happening right now? Is he not a Puerto Rican shortstop for the Dodgers? What the fuck's happening? <laughs> Dude, I did that 23 and me. I did that shit. You spin the cup, you mail your DNA in. I did that. They sent me a jar of mayonnaise back. <laughs> I am white as shit, Dallas, yeah. White person handout, page seven, bitch. I need a fucking tater tot once a week. So when white people uh, like mayonnaise and tater tots, uh, that's another sort of cultural observation he's made throughout the course of his life. Um, crowd likes it uh, again other comedians have sort of mentioned that before but it has it's not really as funny as as when brendan schaub says it uh, i think a lot of his stand-up is sort of um based on other comedy he's watched and he just sort of mentions this the similar things that he's also seen uh with other comedians uh and then he goes on stage and just sort of mentions it and uh and people are really liking it it's really good <laughs> Would a fucking hot pocket kill you every now and then? <laughs> every time dinner would come, I'm like, oh, does she really think beans go with every goddamn meal? Is she serious? <laughs> she for real? Every time dinner would come, I'm like, does it ever occur to her? Maybe Brendan's not trying to shit his pants tonight. How about that? <laughs> Fuck. Big applause break. So sometimes if you don't have, um, like, uh, if your joke doesn't really have a, a sort of really a lot of humor to it you can just say shit his pants really loud and uh people people in dallas will just give it right up every time dinner would come my asshole would go like this fuck bro, fuck, bro. Fuck. we're dying down here poppy it's so spicy bro So that was his, uh, the impression of his butthole was the, uh, was the punchline there. Um, obviously buttholes don't talk, uh, they don't get stressed out, and they don't uh, call you poppy. Um, so that's sort of the, the humor there is the absurdity of your own ass uh, talking to you and calling you poppy. I've never been thicker since I got with a Mexican man. <laughs> Thick with three fucking C's. Dude, everything they eat, bean, cheese, bean, Woo! cheese, bean, cheese, bean, cheese. I'm like, what the hell, man? We're just going to carb load year round? We never tailor off the carbs? That's the game plan? We're just all going to be built like armadillos? <laughs> <laughs> now, that's very funny to say um, built like armadillos for carb loading, because I would think, you know, he probably mentioned the fattest animal he can imagine. Um, when I think of overweight, carb-loaded animals, I don't think of armadillos. Um, I, don't, I don't know if he meant this to be a joke or if he doesn't know what an armadillo actually is. Um, but either way, it's, uh, it's very funny. I, I think that it's funny he kind of went reverse. I would have said, you know, maybe he's a pig or a, you know, a, a, a walrus or something. Something you think of as fat, but he just says an armadillo, which I, either means he meant to say that as very, very funny. Uh, as a bait and switch, or a, he actually doesn't know what an armadillo is. <laughs> I got so thick in the pandemic, I, uh, I decided to go on a keto diet. If you know what keto is, keto is a diet where you can't eat Mexican food. That's the diet. <laughs> it's, pr it's pretty easy to stick to, man. Just don't touch a fucking tortilla, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
Here's my problem, though. Here's my problem. Every Friday, my mother-in-law cooks my favorite Mexican food at my house. She has her own house, but does that at mine. It makes no sense. <laughs> so before I started this keto diet, I went up to my girl. I go, hey, you know I love your mom. Her food, best in the world. It's my favorite. That's why I'm so fucking fat. Listen. <laughs> Do me a favor, though. I don't want to be tempted. I don't want in the house. Do me a favor. Tell your mom I'm on keto. Can you do that? She goes, won't you tell her? She speaks English. I went, but she doesn't, though. But she doesn't. <laughs> you keep saying that, and she clearly fucking doesn't. The crowd here is very generous. Uh, he's just sort of setting up the, the joke here, and they are loving it. Do me a solid, tell her I'm fucking keto, okay? Eight weeks goes by, your boy hasn't touched a fucking tortilla. Nothing. I walk in the house last Friday, show sure enough, there's a fucking fiesta! And my favorite food! You know how, like, Theo Vaughn can't bring out cocaine? Nice, so he's calling out another comedian uh, for his cocaine addiction. Um, uh, a lot of these people are fans of the podcast. They're sort of fans about, uh, of all the behind-the-scenes stuff that he works on. And so uh, mentioning any kind of that uh, sort of podcast universe is obviously going to get a big uh, round of applause from this crowd. You know how, like, he struggles with cocaine? Like, if there was cocaine on the table right now, he'd fucking snort it from right field. You feel me? <laughs> God bless him. I love that fucking dude. That's I am with fucking Pozole. I see it, dude. I will fucking take it to the snout. I can't be around it. I see it, I eat it. So I walked in, I go, Mama, Mama, you know I love, Mama, what are you doing? I know you know, I'm on keto. I know, I know you know, somebody told you I'm on keto. She goes, mijo, mijo, bueno, andale, andale, mijo, mijo. Cabron, cabron, look, cabron, cabron, cabron. She grabs this tray, she goes, cabron, cabron, look, taquitos. It's keto, bitch. So that's, uh, that was, so the punchline of that, um, bit that was about, um, two, almost three minutes long was that he, uh, was trying to tell his, uh, Mexican mother-in-law that he was on the keto diet and trying to tell her this, lost in translation, she thought he was on a taquito diet, um, so that's sort of the big punchline, obviously. Uh, when things get lost in translation, huge comedy can occur, and he's a master of his craft. He knows that uh, that was just a golden opportunity to write a great bit. I'm just gonna stay thick, y'all. It's my DNA. And then he called her a bitch. Oh, the other thing you know about Dana Mexican. No. Prepared a nice meal for him and his family. Um, but that's obviously, he probably made that part up. Tell me this, there's me flaming hot Cheetos all over your house. <laughs> they love them, they love them. It's like catnip for Mexicans, they love them. <laughs> so that's just a, a little observation, a kind of self-contained joke. Uh, the Mexicans are, uh, they love flaming hot Cheetos. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't even really close it out uh, that way. He just sort of uh, mentions that observation and then just kind of waits for the, uh, the laugh to die down. I'm the only person in my house who doesn't speak Spanish. I feel like a refugee in my own goddamn house. <laughs> my white friends learned a Latino before go, dude, just fucking learn Spanish, put a little effort in, learn Spanish. How hard can it be? I'm all, bitch, I am 38. <laughs> I struggle with English at times. <laughs> That is true. You know what it feels like that my five-year-old son roll up on his bike and talk shit to me in Spanish? You know what that feels like? As a father, you know what that feels like? I don't have a clue what he's talking about. I don't have a clue. I thought puto meant dude for the longest time. I dropped him out of the school last week. I was all, later, puto! <laughs> Teacher's like, what the fuck? I'm all, puto, puto. So obviously this whole crowd uh, knows what puto means. Um, I myself uh, don't know what that means. 
Uh, it would be nice if he'd sort of explain this a little more for uh, people that don't live in Dallas, but uh, obviously he's got a really uh, big fan base here, and there's no reason for him to, you know, expand outside of the uh, American Southwest, because um, he's obviously doing very well here, and uh, the crowd really likes this kind of inside baseball. Puto? <laughs> Well, the many things. So that was that. That was the, so that bit was about learning Spanish, uh, and his kid. And everyone in, ha in his house speaks Spanish. He doesn't speak Spanish, and I assume "puto" is some sort of swear word in Spanish. And uh, he called his kid that in front of everyone, creating like a large sort of a public humiliation, um, which of course is very funny. And uh, <clears throat> that's the crowd is responding well to that. Things I love about the Mexican culture is, uh, I, and I do love your culture, man. One of the many things I love about it is you guys always have something to celebrate. Every week you have something to celebrate. As a white person, my dad's like, "Only oh, your birthday, motherfucker." I'm like, "All right, once a year, be cool, Dad. Be cool." Not Mexicans every week. So he's kind of making, um, you know. With a bit of a setup, he's saying his, his dad called him a motherfucker and that white people only celebrate uh, their birthdays, whereas Mexicans have uh, many holidays. So that's kind of funny that there's, you know, that Mexicans have more holidays than white people. That's kind of a funny setup for a joke here. Since every week something's popping. Last week, some girl turned 15. Not, not even related to us. Through the party at my house. <laughs> Apparently the Mexican culture turned 15 is a big deal. White people, we don't give a fuck. These Mexicans gave all the fuck, yeah. I walk in the house, these Mexicans give a fuck about social distancing. There was a mask in sight. I walk in the house, there's a mariachi band. <laughs> They're beating the shit out of this pinata. There's flaming hot Cheetos spraying over the goddamn living room. I walk in, I look at my girl. Shh. Big callback to the Flaming Hot Cheetos he mentioned before. Uh, so it's all worth it when he came back around and said, Mexicans, uh, uh, if you remember earlier, he said Mexicans love Flaming Hot Cheetos. Goes through a couple more bits, brings that back. Great callback. Crowd loves it. Just a master. Jesus Christ. Quite the party. What are we celebrating? What, she getting to Harvard early? What's going on here? She goes, nope. Just turned 15 and went, Fuck yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <fuck yeah. laughs> the other thing I love about the Mexican culture is you. So he sort of made an observation that uh, yeah, the, the Mexicans were celebrating a, a girl turning 15, um, and uh, off, white people often don't celebrate that as much. And the punchline is not really a punchline. It's just sort of he makes he notices that and tells the crowd, and he's excited about that, and so they they got excited as well. As you guys stick together. You guys are so loyal to each other. You fucking have each other's back, and I love that. White people, we're not like that, are we? As soon as we turn 16, we're all fucking see you, Peter and Debbie, and fucking. <laughs> so Peter and Debbie, obviously, um, some stereotypical white people names, so uh, the crowd guessed that that is funny if you mention that. Um, White people, uh, a lot of Peter and Debbies exist uh, in the within the Caucasian race, so it's uh, it's a funny thing to say. Those are my real parent names. <laughs> I told you I'm white as shit, man. Yeah, Mexicans stick together. Like you never walk into a bar and see one Mexican hammered by themselves. No way. They're there with their amigos. I was taking my family out for dinner the other night. By family, I mean all 15 of them. And we walk outside, and they'll gather on my car. I drive a two-door coupe. It makes no fucking sense. And my mother-in-law's at the trunk. I'm all, Mama, we just talked about this inside the house. Remember, you have your own car. I will text your address. We will meet at the restaurant. She goes, no, mijo. We fit. The fuck? No, you don't fit. She goes, bueno, we fit. I went, please don't do this. I promise you, you do not fucking fit. So he's really consistent with his theming of the jokes, which is really good for like branding and being consistent on stage. Uh, he's saying, you know, a lot of the time his mother-in-law will say something and he'll just go like, what the fuck? And then his wife will say something and he'll be like, 
what the fuck? Like he'll just, he'll be very, uh, have a look of consternation on his face and uh, dissatisfaction at these people in his life uh, who have a different culture than he's used to. Um, so he's sort of being consistent in that way, which is really great. Um, the, the, you know, helps you build your brand and your image on stage and uh, it helps people really understand the jokes. Sure enough, we fit, y'all. We fucking fit, man, yeah. Crazy, yeah. So they, they all fit in the car. Two of them were hanging off the spoiler, didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Forget how I'm gonna wrap up this Mexican bait going hard on my family. Oh, I know, me and my girl, we're not doing well. That's right, we're not doing well. So she wanted to go to couples therapy. I'm like, all right, good luck, find one to the middle. So he's having uh, relationship problems. Uh, which again is, uh, you know, he mentioned earlier that he hates his wife and uh, now later sort of we're midway through the special, he's saying that they are having relationship problems and they're going to couples therapy. Um, I think he means to say couples therapy and I don't know if it's a joke that he's saying couples therapy or if uh, he, he thinks that's how it's pronounced. I think he means couples therapy. I don't think couples therapy is... Uh, is a practice in the United States, but we'll see. I, I believe he means couples therapy, though. A little pandemic. She found one, man. She fucking found one. Yeah, two-star review, but we're going. So <laughs> we're driving a couples therapy. She's crying just because she therapy. Flaming Hot Cheetos. <laughs> Flaming Hot Cheetos again. I'm the second call back. Uh, so he's, uh, he, he's really, he's worked on this a lot. I'm just because my life currently. <laughs> And we pull up to the, we pull up to this brick building, this small brick building. I've never seen some shit like this. Small little brick building. We pull up to and this therapist has her name plastered on the side of the goddamn building. Giant red neon letters, just fucking. Zzz. It says Dr. Rodriguez. I get out. I'm like, well, it's an away game for your boy, isn't it? <laughs> We did not go in there, Dallas. We did not. We're looking for a Dr. Robinson, maybe Dr. Allen at this point, you feel me? A little home field advantage. So I guess the punchline there, um, so you can see the setup. The setup at the beginning, he says, uh, me and my wife are having problems. We're gonna go to couples therapy. Um, uh, she's shooting flaming hot Cheetos everywhere, which is a callback to the original joke. Then they get to couples therapy. It's in a tiny building, which is funny. Um, and there's a big neon sign that says Dr. Rodriguez on it, which implies that the doctor they're gonna meet, the psychiatrist, is a, a Mexican person. And uh, so they're going to side with his Mexican wife. And so he opts out of going to see the Mexican doctor. Uh, he would rather see a white doctor. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the joke, uh, is that he prefers uh, to see someone who will side uh, with his race during couples therapy. And then uh, he takes a little drink there because he knows that uh, the crowd also agrees with him there. I moved in a house recently, moved in a new house in LA. Whenever you move in a new house, it's always weird. It's kind of risky on stage to mention new houses, um, especially in LA. They're very, very expensive. They can kind of turn the audience against you if they know that you're very wealthy. Um, but I think that he, uh, it's part of his brand and I think the crowd is okay with uh, how much money he makes. But it's even weirder in the middle of a pandemic. So we move in the house, my girl goes, Papi, Papi, I've seen the neighbors. They're pretty old, They're pretty, let's play it safe. They're probably COVID conscious. Why don't you just go over and induce yourself, right? I'll bake some Mexican cookies and you go over there. I'm like, what the fuck's Mexican cookie? What are you talking about? It's like a chocolate chip with sauce all over it? What are you talking about? What are you... I'm like, that's a terrible idea. Just, I'll take it. I'll figure it out. So obviously Mexicans don't put salsa on chocolate chip cookies. Uh, that would not be a Mexican cookie. Uh, so he just made that up. Uh, very funny. So first night in the new house, everything's all good, man. Everything's all good. Kids fall asleep, girl fall asleep, I fall asleep. All good. 3 a.m. on the dot, I'm woken up to I'm like, what the fuck is howling outside? Whatever. Next day, I install the security stuff, cameras, the ring stuff, all that, all that stuff, the doorbell, all the ring security stuff, all good. Fall asleep that night, 
kids asleep, girls asleep, I fall asleep. 3 a.m. on the goddamn dot. I'm woken up again. I'm like, there's a goddamn gargoyle outside my window, dude. <laughs> well, I didn't know about this Ring app. You download the app, there's an entire community of people just snitching on each other. <laughs> it's like Takashi 69 made this app. It's fantastic. I, I don't know who Takashi 69 is, but obviously the crowd does. I scroll, listen, dude. I scroll that app for hours looking for real crime. I'm like, come on, dude. Somebody fucking kill somebody, for God's sakes. You know how much first 48 I watch? I'm like, we got 48 hours, bro. Let's get going here, man. <laughs> That's cool. He uses a lot of references in his stand-up. Um, Takashi 69, uh, the first 48. Um, naming things uh, that people know is a great way to get good laughs. What I didn't know is you can narrow it down to your hood. You can it narrow it down right to your neighborhood. It's dope. You can narrow it right down. So I'm like, ooh, let's see what's popping in this new neighborhood of mine. <laughs> Two doors down, Jerry goes, hey, man, this mountain lion ain't my goddamn dogs. Somebody needs to do something. Jesus Christ. I'm like, that is not good. So that's a nice little kind of a... A scared Brendan Schaub voice he does there. Oh, that, that is not good. Like, that's funny. Diane right next door to me goes, yeah, I used to be the fucking cat lady. Not anymore. That mountain lion ripped my goddamn cat's head off and ate all of them. My kids saw it from the window. We can't sleep at night. Somebody needs to do something. Like, this is not good. Another little then David there. right next door to me, David goes, yeah, the same mountain lion stole my Amazon package. I'm all, All right, dude. <laughs> but that gives me the idea. I'm like, ooh, I know how I'm going to introduce myself to the new neighbors. I'm going to take care of this little kitty problem for them. That's what I'm going to do. This is going to be easy work. But I need to buy a gun. I need to go buy a gun. I've never, listen, Dallas, I've never owned a gun, never shot a gun, played Call of Duty twice. I'll figure it out. <laughs> so I go into my local L.A. gun store. Again, I've never bought a gun. I got so hustled in there. I got so bamboozled, dude. Listen, I've never shot a gun. I walked out with an AR-15, <laughs> like the red laser thing on top of it. I walked out with the Zero Dark Thirty Navy SEAL night vision helmet. <laughs> what? I was like, dude, 19 grand for all this? Hell yeah, bro. Fuck yeah, it's a steal, bro. No, I'll wear it out. No, I can see everything, dude. That cat's fucked, bro. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know, man. Yeah, thank you. Dude, killer deal. <laughs> so he got scammed at the gun store, which is pretty funny. Uh, he went in there expecting to just get a regular firearm, and instead he ended up buying uh, an M16 and uh, night vision goggles, uh, overkill for uh, hunting a, a, a cougar coming out of the mountains. Um, so the joke there is that obviously he overspent, um, but of course he does have uh, $19,000 on hand, which is important for the crowd to know as well. <laughs> so I get home, I'm, listen, I've never owned a gun. I'm hyped up, I'm loading the gun. I got my fucking night vision on. I'm like, this shit is fucking dope, dude. In my head, I'm like, right, this is this how I'm envisioning this, right? That cat shows up at 3 a.m. every night, right? So I'll be sleeping, it's 3 a.m., it's late. I'll be sleeping, right? I'm here, Rah! I'm gonna fucking pop out of bed, right? I'm gonna fucking, yeah! And then I always have my Uggs bedside, right? My Uggs will be right there. <laughs> Be cool, Tom Brady wears Uggs. So I'll fucking, I'll, I'll, put, I'll slide my Uggs on, right? I'll have my Air 15 like this. I'll have my Zero Dark 30 night vision like this. Here we my go. My big dick's right there still. So I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I threw that in, but be cool. So I'm fucking. <laughs> She's so offended. So I'm here, right? So I'm here and I catch them like, I'm like, enough's enough, dude. I'm going to slide that sliding door open like, yeah. And every video I've ever seen, like online, those mountain lions have like those soft, wet, black noses. I'm gonna punt them right in that goddamn nose, fucking, and then. <laughs> I'm looking at my ring camera and go, World Star! So he's building a lot of tension here um, towards uh, confronting this mountain lion. A good, very ma a master story. Your boys story are gonna go viral. It's gonna be lit as fuck. I can't wait, man. So that next night, right? I'm pacing lit back. As, and so saying lit as fuck. Um, 
using sort of, uh, you know, common youthful slang really helps uh, a 38 year old man kind of seem like he's uh, uh, current and cool. Of course, my girl's like, go to bed, I'm all shut up, bitch. I'm fucking here. <laughs> tells, his, tells, his, <laughs> tells his wife to shut up, again calls her a bitch. Again, I got my Ugg boots on, I got my Air 15, I got my Zero Dark 30 night vision on, right? Still got the big dick, sorry, I'm fucking here. I, had, I gotta stick with it, right? So I'm here, I'm, pacing, I'm looking at the clock, it's all 2.58, I'm all praying to God this cat shows up, bro. It's 2.59, I'm like, last day on earth for you, kitty. 3 a.m. hits, I hear, Rah! I'm all, showtime. I slide that glass door open, I'm all, yeah! Here's the thing, Dallas. I, uh, I've never seen a mountain lion in person before. In my head, I was thinking like a small type of bobcat type of thing, right? Like, the gun's a little extreme. I don't need the Navy SEAL night vision, dude. Like, you can probably grab it by the scruff of the neck and be like, enough's enough, kitty. Wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> So this is good. This is very self-deprecating. You know, he doesn't know what a mountain lion looks like in person. Uh, it's funny because obviously he's never looked it up online. He's also implying that he's never even tried to find out what it looks like. He doesn't have the resources available. Um, so this is a very uh, believable, very funny story that he's telling here. Well, no, dumbass. It's a line of the mountains, dude. It's fucking... This thing was Mufasa. Fucking... Ah! It's like this mountain lion ate Joe Rogan's trash. This thing is fucking... <laughs> yeah, it mentions another guy in the podcast universe that he's a part of. Crowd loves a good oh, mention of Joe dude, Rogan, dude, of course. I, I went, oh, shit! And I slammed the door. Dude, I threw my AR-15 like this. My, I fucking threw my night vision. I'm not even left-handed. I was like, oh, my God. So he's got the big, big build-up of the story. Uh, it seems like he's going to do something about this mountain lion. He spends all the money on the gear, builds all this tension, uh, and then it turns out at the end, he sees a mountain lion. Uh, he's actually too afraid to shoot it and uh, ends up closing the door and not, and not shooting the mountain lion. So again, he sub sort of subverted our expectations, which is very, very funny. And uh, he's just getting ready to sort of dismount the special here. Still got my Ugg boots, still got the big dick. Not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I uh, <laughs> I got in that ring app the next morning. Went, yo, we got a mountain lion problem, y'all. <laughs> Dallas, that's my time. I love you guys. Okay, so that was it at the end. So he makes a call back to the ring story. So that was sort of the big story he ended on. Crowd loves it. The Gringo Poppy. I was really hoping uh, he would mention uh, why it's called the Gringo Poppy. Um, I don't know what that means. But uh, I thought it might have been a joke he would mention it during the special, but he's not. He does have a thick boy, Triple C. Uh, he did mention that during the special. Pretty cool. I mean, I hope that this clears up for you uh, why Brendan Schaub is so funny um, and why he's one of the best comedians working today. Uh, I hope this gives you a fresh perspective uh, into the craftsmanship that he brings to every stand-up performance that he does. Um, please like and subscribe if you liked this video and would like more comedians explained for you. Uh, we should have some links down below you can check out. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.